Hello CEP 200 students and welcome to the second week of Intro to the Counseling Professions for the winter 2020 semester. I just want to say um, right off the bat that I have been kind of looking over the assignments that were due yesterday and everything is looking really good. All of the, um, the, the before the course started discussion board posts should be graded unless there's been kind of a, a couple of stragglers over the last couple of days, but um, I do believe that I did have all of those graded. Um, and I did get through most of the quiz ones. Um, I did get a couple of emails about people concerned about getting their, um, their some of the questions wrong or only receiving partial points. Um, so just to let you know, for most of the quizzes, I do go through and manually grade them. Some of them, one or two of them do not have the the manual component where you have short answers. Um, so for the ones that do have the short answers or something that you have to type in or for partial credit, usually I will go through and I will manually grade those. So you might have a higher grade than what you initially scored on it just because I had gone through and give partial credit and whatnot. Um, as far as the discussion board and the unit one and two assignments, I should have those um, graded throughout the week and then pretty much wrapped up as of Sunday. So. For this week, um, you are going to be working on Unit 3 and Unit 4. So you are going to be introduced to counseling in the vocations, as well as rehabilitation counselors and career counselors. So you can see that these two units tie in pretty well, so it's great that they kind of um, lined up where they're packaged together um, because rehabilitation counselors, um, one of their primary roles or primary um, populations that they work with are individuals who are looking to get back into the workforce in a area that they were not originally in. So what I mean by that is say for example you have an individual who was you know working a particular kind of job and they ended up getting hurt on the job and due to that injury they are no longer able to go back into that particular area of work. They would go and see a rehabilitation counselor who would help them um, kind of navigate their interests and you know what they're good at and get them into an alter like an alternative um, career. Um, and so what they will use, you will talk about um, achievement and aptitude tests in this unit. Um, and I do believe that you are also introduced to some vocational assessments, so um, as well as vocational theory. So one of my favorites is the, the Holland theory. And um, what Holland believed is that we fall into one, one particular area. I think of, I believe there are six total. Um, of our interests and um, whether that be realistic, investigative, artistic, social, uh, there's a couple of different ones and you're going to be introduced to those in, in the chart that they kind of like fall into. And um, I do believe you do actually take the self-directed search in this unit. So you will have the opportunity to kind of be hands-on and get an idea of what your Holland code is. So there is going to be a three-digit code. So um, what that is, is it's basically ranking your top three, um, categories. So for me, I don't think I remember it exactly, but social has always been my number one code. Um, so that'll be the first digit in your code. And that is because I enjoy working with people. I enjoy, um, counseling and talking with others and interacting with others. And that does fall under the social category. Um, I do believe that my others were investigative and artistic. Um, and if there are, are there are websites such as Onet that you can actually go in and um, select your code and it will give you a list of all of the different careers that match up with that exact code. So um, the vocational assessments are actually really, really cool and I'm interested to see, you know, what your codes are. You will be reflecting on it in your assignment um, as well as kind of what you think. You know, does it, does it match with your interests? Um, or the environment that you enjoy working in and that kind of thing. So you'll have an opportunity to reflect on that, which I think is really, really cool. Um, so let's take a look here really quick before I forget. Um, I am going to give you an answer uh, to one of your quiz questions. So this is going to be for quiz two. And the question that I'm going to talk about really quick um, it says, as a career counselor, you will only discuss vocational topics with your clients. So, for example, resume writing, career information, attending network events, etc. This is false. Um, and this kind of lines up with what I was getting into in last week's video, where you may, um, you know, have really narrowed down your scope when 
um, studying for uh, your credentials for your career. And just because you went into that particular field does not mean that you are not able to do um, other things. So you might wear many hats in each of your counseling roles. So for that particular question that is false, um, and I know that in my, my initial video, I had given you a little bit of background information about me. So for example, um, I am a certified rehabilitation counselor and um, I am also a mental health counselor. So first and foremost, it, I just, something kind of came up for me when I said that. Um, last semester was a little concerning because you will read about rehabilitation counselors in this unit, obviously. But some people had been referring to rehabilitation counselors as someone who held um, physical therapy credentials. And obviously, we are not talking about physical therapy at all in this course. So please get as far away from that idea as possible. Um, as I had mentioned, rehabilitation counselors work with people who might have been injured on the job, but it is not in the, the, you know, the physical or the physiological aspect whatsoever. Um, it is more about finding a career um, or getting them hooked up with services that are most appropriate for them. So going back to what I was initially saying, um, I am a rehabilitation counselor, but I have been able to do many things with just the rehabilitation counseling credential. So I don't think I gave you too much information about what my background experience is in. I'm not entirely sure if I did, but just as an example, so when I had just my rehabilitation counseling certification credentials, I had worked in a homeless shelter with individuals with a psychiatric diagnosis. And in this role, I was providing counseling in a mental health capacity, but also in a, in a case management um, role as well, where I was making sure that they had referrals and were linked to appropriate services. And then for the vocational component, you know, a lot of these people came in, they were really interested in getting back into the workforce. And so I connected them with people who were able to help them do that as well. So to go along with what I was saying, you might have a rehabilitation counseling credential, but that doesn't mean that you only have to work in the vocations. Um, you know, I worked with individuals with developmental disabilities with just this credential. I worked with, um, you know, students from disadvantaged populations. So there's a lot that you can do. So, you know, when you're considering your career options, yes, you want to, you know, of course, study something that you have the most interest in. But um, just remember that just because you go into one particular, you know, credentialing process doesn't mean that you are stuck to only that population. Um, so also in this, um, unit, we are going to be, so that was for unit three. Um, for unit four, we are getting into working with children, couples, and families. And I will say that this unit is usually the most favored unit when I'm getting feedback at the end of the semester. And so the, the counselors you're going to learn about in this unit are um, child and adolescent counselors and marriage couples and family counselors. And what makes this, this unit um, so unique is the fact that we are kind of talking, we're tying in the trauma-informed care um, TED Talk that you had watched um, last week. And we are also going to tie trauma-informed care into the um, adverse childhood experiences study. As I had mentioned last week, this is something I just, I just absolutely love this material. I love this unit. I love everything about this research. Um, and like I had mentioned, I usually get the same feedback from students. So before I jump too, too far ahead and, you know, go on a rant. So you are completing units three and four this week. For unit three, you are going to be reading chapters four and 11 in Helkowski. You are going to watch The Art of Rehabilitation Counseling. It's a short video. You are going to watch um, a TED Talk titled The Voices in My Head. You are going to read three supplemental materials, which are um, titled on the course schedule for you, and the articles are in the UBLearns folder. Um, and then you're going to do unit three assignment and then quiz number two. For unit four, you're going to read Halkowski's chapter five and eight. You are going to read um, three supplemental materials, one of which is titled the ACEs Prevalence Study. 
You are then going to watch a TED Talk um, titled How Childhood Trauma Affects Health Across a Lifetime. You are going to complete Unit 4 assignment. And then you are also going to do Discussion Board Number 4. With the discussion boards, again, please do not forget to make your initial post and then comment on two of your classmates' posts. Um, for the discussion board this week, you are actually going to be reflecting on Nadine Burke Harris's TED Talk that you are going to watch. And the reason why I um, include so many TED Talks in this course is because, I don't know if I had mentioned this already, but what I really like to do is... Um, not only do we talk about what the different counseling professions are, but what I really wanted to do is also introduce you into different um, populations or problems that each of these professionals might run into on the job. Um, so for example, I put trauma-informed care under um, clinical mental health counseling and addiction, count addiction counseling um, because in these counseling careers, you are working um, most of the time with very, very vulnerable populations. You are getting, um, you know, people who have a lot of dual or co-occurring diagnoses. And with that comes a lot of trauma. And so trauma-informed care exposes you to the fact that you're going to have to be, um, you know, very careful and very sensitive with the populations that you work with. Um, and I think that that was really appropriate to put under um, those particular career counselors um, or counseling professionals. And also, I think it's a really good segue into the rest of the material that we're talking about, such as the um, Adverse Childhood Experiences Study. So um, the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study, I did put under Unit 4 because I felt that this was appropriate, especially for child and adolescent counselors. Um, really being able to be a clinician who is not only competent and able to, you know, really utilize trauma-informed care, but also being aware of different signs and symptoms of trauma and um, really being able to not only identify but really discuss adverse childhood experiences and knowing what the different adverse childhood experiences are and what the, what the consequences of it really might look like um, for kids. So, um, again, I really, really love this, and I think that Dr. Nadine Burke Harris does an excellent, excellent job at really talking about the research and why it's so important and how we can make a difference as clinicians. Um, she actually was recently titled or um, given the position of uh, Surgeon General in California. So she is a pediatrician, but she does an excellent job at tying in how different experiences tied with kind of that psychological trauma can have adverse effects on our health in the long run. So I'm not going to go off on too much more of a tangent with that, but um, I really hope that you enjoy enjoy this week. Um, I know it's a lot of work, but again, you know, we're taking a 15-week course and cramming it into three weeks. So I really believe that, you know, you're able to do it um, I think that you guys did a really great job this last week and anyone who didn't need an extension reached out to me and, you know, it really wasn't an issue as long as you've got, you know, a valid reason for it. Um, I think that that is pretty much it for this week. Um, we've got units three and four, then we will have units five and six. So we've got about a week and a half after this one. So what I'm going to have you do, you know what, that should be enough time. Um, if you come across any of the counseling professions that you're interested, um, up until this point, you know, you've looked through the syllabus, you've looked through, you know, the, the tracking calendar and what professions we're going to cover. So, you know, whether it be mental health counselors, addiction counselors, rehabilitation counselors, career counselors, um, child and adolescent counselors, marriage couples and family counselors, um, counselors in the expressive arts, organizational counselors, pastoral counselors, um, and then school counselors and basically um, student services or college counselors. From those lists, um, if from that list rather, if any of these careers really jump out at you, it might be a good idea if we haven't talked about them yet, just to maybe glance at them and see what they entail. Because um, if you take a look at your the one paper that's included in the course, you're 
doing it on the accounting professional of interest. So maybe just give yourself a head start, you know, look around, see which one you'd have interest in, interest in doing. I know at this week we'll only have covered, you know, four units. So, you know, four or five different accounts and professionals. But if you have an idea of what you would like at this point, it might make that final paper a little bit easier on you. Um, but other than that, I think that that is it. And you guys are doing a really, really great job. Um, let's just remember, you know, with trauma-informed care and the adverse childhood experience studies, sometimes we get conflicting positions or opinions about these topics. So in the discussion board, let's just make sure that we are being respectful. Um, and you know, if you have a vision or an opinion or a perspective on these different topics that are different from someone else or, you know, vice versa, ask them about it. You know, we don't, we don't need to be disrespectful or judgmental or anything, but maybe take this as an opportunity to really learn about someone else's perspective and, you know, why they think that way. Um, I once had a student that said, they really didn't understand the purpose of trauma-informed care and, you know, they didn't agree with it. And I even had to like kind of catch myself and I'm like, what do you mean? Um, because it's kind of like a, a no harm kind of approach to therapy. You know, there really is no, no harm to it. It's just a way to make sure that we're being sensitive to others. So for me, that kind of caught me off guard. Um, but, you know, I had to catch myself. So if that's the case, you know, the po power to whoever might have that perspective, it's totally okay if you don't understand the the purpose, you know, maybe it just takes a little bit more information for someone to really understand the benefits or, you know, why, why it's really, you know, utilized in the, the helping profession. So if you have those opinions, totally okay. Feel free to ask questions, you know, let's just make sure that we're being kind to one another. Um, but other than that, I think that is it. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I think I've been pretty good with getting back to emails. So um, until next week.